John Chrysostom said, No matter where you are, you can set up your sanctuary. Just have pure intentions. Neither place nor time will be an obstacle. Concentrate your mind. Be wholly composed in prayer. God is not troubled by any place. God only desires a clear and fervent mind. Welcome to Wanstead Parish Eucharist on this, the Feast of the Holy Trinity. Um, I'm Canon Anne and I welcome you on behalf of our rector, Father Jack, uh, the ministry team and the whole parish to our Eucharist today. Um, I hope that you've been able to read uh, or listen to um, Sue Allenson reading the beautiful passage from Isaiah for our first reading. If you haven't, you can always pick it up on, on YouTube um, later. And on this, the glorious feast of the Holy Trinity, I invite you, even if it isn't your normal practice and tradition, to make the sign of the cross, to invoke the Holy Spirit as we do at the, the um, Holy Trinity, as we do at the beginning of every service. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these holy mysteries, I invite you to say with me, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, let us put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. Father, you come to meet us when we return to you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, you died on the cross for our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Spirit, you give us life and peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the Collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace, by the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the Eternal Trinity, and in the power of the Divine Majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I said earlier, our first reading is from uh, the prophet Isaiah, and I encourage you to uh, view that on YouTube. So we move to our Gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. 
one God who was and who is and who is to come. Alleluia. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. May I speak in the name of God, who is Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Well, I was scrolling through um, Twitter yesterday and I came across a tweet from um, a young female curate and she said, I have been spared the curate's fate of having to preach on Trinity Sunday. And although I didn't know, I don't know her, I found myself replying and said, I've spent 25 years trying to avoid doing just that. And I followed it by saying, my line is, it's a mystery, let it remain a mystery. And there was another tweet as well from another clergy person saying, I hope none of you are going to try and define the Holy Trinity on Sunday. Well, I take heart from the words in our, in our gospel this morning. They worshipped him, but some doubted. Well, here we are worshipping him, and I'm quite sure that on every occasion when we worship, there are some uh, who may doubt, there are some who doubt much, some who doubt very little, um, some who doubt occasionally. And sometimes I probably think that, well, Trinity Sunday is probably one of those days when perhaps doubt is quite high up, up the list. What's all this about? What is this about? Well, if I was a learned theologian, which I'm not, I might be taking you through the Athanasian Creed, which is supposed to be read on Trinity Sunday in all churches. I might be picking it all out, all those incomprehensible words that try to describe something which is incomprehensible. I could be looking at the church fathers or the councils of the early church when they tried to tease all this out. But what point would it be? What point would it be if I could do that? What would a single parent at this time who is trying to feed their children, to educate them, to entertain them in this time of pandemic, what point would all those words and explanations of those words mean to them? What point would they be to a family where every adult member is worried about the job they have, the job they've just lost, the job they may never have in the future. What point would all that learning be? What point would it be to those who sit and watch and wait while their loved ones die? What point would it be for all those who experience racism, prejudice, hatred, and so on at this time, well, at all times. What point, what impact would it have on their lives? I would suggest none. They would think it's a load of mumbo jumbo. So what point is there of the Trinity? Well, I want to put you the question that I put to everybody who has ever come to me for confirmation classes, be they an adult or a young person. One of the first questions I ask is, who is God for you? And I can say that over the years, without exception, 
the first image that people bring up and the first image that they say that they've had from their childhood is of God who is uh, old, long white beard, white hair, sometimes sitting on a cloud, sometimes sitting on a throne. And then I take, I say, well, look, let's do a Bible search. Let's see what the Bible says about God. Who is God? And we discover that God is father, mother, judge, prophet, priest, king, rock, shepherd, eagle, and it goes on. We find all these amazing images for God. God is so many things to so many people at different times in their life. And so my challenge today for all of us is, who is God for you? When we think of God and we say God the Father, sometimes say God the Creator, who is God for you? Images, if any, resonate. Who is God for you? Jesus. Who is Jesus for you? Well, Jesus is often a bit easier, isn't he? Because he was flesh and blood. He did live on earth and went about among us. We know about his birth. We know about his teaching. We know about his suffering, his death, his resurrection and his ascension. We can know Jesus. But do you know Jesus? Do I know Jesus? Who is Jesus for us? Is he still the babe of Bethlehem? Or did he become the man of Galilee for us? Do we allow him into our lives? Is he our friend and our brother? Who is Jesus for you? Who is Jesus for you at this moment? Can we bring him into our hearts? Do we meet him here in the Eucharist? Do we find him in the scriptures? Do we see him in the people around us in one of his many disguises? Who is Jesus? And then the Holy Spirit. Well, we celebrated the great festival of Pentecost last Sunday when we heard that the Holy Spirit came to those disciples like a rushing mighty wind and there were flames of fire. Where is the Holy Spirit in your life? Is the Holy Spirit the fire in your belly I talked about last week? Is it the breath of God, the Ruach of God, the wind of God rushing through your lives? Who is the Holy Spirit for you? Where is the Holy Spirit in your life? The Holy Spirit was given to each one of us at our baptism and at our confirmation. But the Holy Spirit goes on renewing and refreshing. Are we building up in ourselves the gifts of the Holy Spirit that I talked about last week? The gifts of love, joy, peace, gentleness, kindness, patience, self-control, all of those things. Where is the Holy Spirit in your life? Is the Holy Spirit energizing, giving us life? Because I'm, for myself, God cannot be thought. God is not a formula. God is not a very complex creed. God is to be experienced, not explained. And so I hope that you can experience the Trinity in your lives and that you will be able, as the disciples did, but this time perhaps without so much doubt, to be able to worship, to fall down and worship, so that we can, with the angels and the archangels, the so cherubim and seraphim, say, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Amen. And so we confess our faith in the words of the Creed where we hear that God is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, and he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who, with the Father and the Son, worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. And we believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of intercession are those set for Trinity Sunday. And the response um, to for mercy and grace is, we plead before your throne in heaven. We plead before your throne in heaven. We come boldly to the throne of grace, praying to the almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit for mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Father of heaven, whose love profound a ransom for our souls has found, we pray for the world created by your love, for its nations and governments. And at this time of pandemic, we pray for all those in power that they may use their authority and leadership for the common good. Extend to them your peace, pardoning love, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Almighty Son, incarnate word, our prophet, priest, redeemer, Lord, we pray for the church created for your glory, for its ministry to reflect those works of yours. And especially at this time, we pray for our diocese as it seeks a new bishop. Extend to us your salvation, growth, mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Eternal Spirit, by whose breath the soul is raised from sin and death, we pray for families and individuals created in your image, for the lonely, the bereaved, the sick and the dying. And among those who are sick, we remember Kay, Leoch Kingham and Simon Tierney. All others on our prayer list or on our own hearts. Breathe on them the breath of life and bring them to your mercy and grace. We plead before your throne in heaven. Thrice Holy Father, Son and Spirit, mysterious Godhead three in one, we pray for ourselves, for your church, and for all whom we remember before you, all those who have died. And among the recently departed, we remember Leslie Hughes, Ian Greer, Jeff Berry, Mary Colmer, Shirley Tierney, and Dennis Kay. Bring us all to bow before your throne in heaven, to receive life and pardon, mercy and grace for all eternity. We worship you, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. Peace of the triune God be always with you. The peace of the Lord be always with you. I invite you to share the peace with those you are worshipping with now.
Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. All that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. We, your holy church, acclaim you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide, three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty, and so with the angels and archangels, with cherubim and seraphim, we sing forever of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, Rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate the memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of thanks and praise, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. And I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you were there already. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit that I should be separated from you. My Lord and my God. Lord Jesus, I have you in my heart, as Holy Mary had you in her arms. You have come to me silently. May I carry you with me in my life. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you have revealed yourself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit and live and reign in the perfect unity of love. Hold us firm in this faith that we may know you in all your ways and evermore rejoice in your eternal glory who are three persons, yet one God, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And before the blessing, um, the diocese um, today has a day of prayer for discerning um, who will be the next Bishop of Chelmsford. And so I'm going to say the prayer for today. God of provision and care, discernment and knowledge, lead us in your love, empower us by your spirit and equip us with your gifts Give us hearts full of love for all people, minds open to the signs of the times, and wisdom to know how to respond to the voice of your calling. We ask this through him whose coming is certain, whose day draws near, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a blessing on this Trinity Sunday. God the Father, who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved Son, bless you. Amen. God the Son, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, bless you. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, who sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts, bless you. Amen. And the blessing of the one true God, 
to whom be all love and glory for time and eternity, come down on you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you for being present at this Holy Eucharist. Uh, just to remind you that um, every day, Monday to Friday, midday prayer live and um, can be picked up later on YouTube. And also on Thursday, Thursday is the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Body of Christ. It's the day when the Church gives thanks for the institution of the Holy Eucharist. It, it is a wonderful feast day and we have, well, been starved of our communion for several months now, but we can nevertheless give thanks for the institution of this blessed sacrament. And I'll be live streaming a Eucharist on that day at 12 noon and can be picked up later on YouTube. So whatever you're doing today, Please keep safe. Don't take risks. It's not over yet. Every blessing to you and yours. Amen.